Hi, Joe Hildreth here uh, from MyHeat.com. Hey, uh, today we're doing a little something different, kind of breaking away from the CNC project. We've got a million things going on. One of the things is, uh, you know, our dog uh, that we had, I don't know, 15 years, um, died a couple years back. And like most everybody else, we buried him in the backyard. Uh, or her, actually, I should say. Her name was Cotton. And uh, so my wife said, hey, wouldn't it be kind of nice if we had some sort of like little stone or something to put out there? Uh, or plaque or something out there, you know, just, you know, just because, and look, um, in my experience, if mama ain't happy, well, nobody's happy, so if she wants it, guess what, she's gonna get it. So, uh, but before I start here, uh, one of the things that I had to do is I kind of roughed out a plaque uh, for the dog that I want to cast in aluminum, and one of the things that I discovered was that uh, uh, my old casting flasks uh, were kind of beat up and really not very usable, so, and, and, and even at that, the ones that I had were too small. So uh, this, the plaque that I made uh, is roughly 8 by 12, and we'll get to take a little closer look at this here in a little bit. Uh, it's 8 by 12, so I want at least 2 inches of uh, sand uh, all the way around it, so I need a flask with, uh, you know, uh, inside, or, you know, inside uh, spacing of, uh, of uh, you know, at least 10 by 14. And, uh, but we'll get into that. So, before I start, uh, one of the things that I wanted to do to make kind of a better uh, flask was to do finger joints, okay? And I'm not much of a woodworker. Obviously, that's why I built the CNC machine, because I think, hey, it could do it for me. But I found a couple videos on YouTube, and uh, these are great. And they're by William Ng uh, Woodworks, I think is how I say his name. Uh, and he teaches you how to make this crosscut sled, or in this case, a dado sled. Uh, using the five cut method that uh, squares the fence uh, with, within, you know, uh, uh, thousands of an inch or less of being uh, truly square. Excellent. And he also uh, shows how to make this finger joint jig uh, to, uh, to cut finger joints. And as you can see, they mesh up very, very nice. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll get into that. So uh, I'll have, uh, we'll bring the camera over here and take a little bit closer look and go from there. Okay, so in this view, you should be seeing a closer look uh, at the finger joint jig. Uh, now I'm cutting my finger joints at, at three eighths, or or whatever my dado three, uh, my two dados in the chipper stack end up being. Uh, again, I, I, I'll put links to his video uh, on both the website, and I'll try to remember to put links uh, underneath this video so that you can see how this is made and adjusted. This is a very accurate um, jig, and so here if we. Get a closer look. You can see that these are nice, snug fitting. You know, have enough room to get glue in there, but they're not so tight that you're going to have to, you know, beat the crap out of them with a mallet to get them in. And you see, they're they they fit well. So this is going to make a, a great flask. Now my flask, I'm actually making out of um, two layers of of half inch. Um, well, I think if you buy this stuff at Lowe's, they call it blonde wood. Uh, maybe it's birch, I don't know, but it's kind of a cabinet-like uh, plywood. It's got several layers. Glue two of these up, cut them to length, and uh, I'll show you. We'll, we'll start cutting these here in a little bit. Um, again, this is for a plaque, and here's a little closer view of the plaque. Now, this is uh, this is not the plaque that I'm going to cast, obviously, because it's way too thick. Um, but you see it's got, got Cotton's name, when she was born, when she died. And then this little recess area here. Uh, we're going to epoxy, we're going to put in a picture and then we'll probably fill that with some clear epoxy. At least that's what we're thinking and then I'll make a block and I'll probably document the whole process. Um, you know, look, I, uh, to my wife, uh, um, this dog was kind of like a kid, so uh, I, I do feel her pain. I've, I've had pets and, and, you know, you grow to love them quite a bit. So anyway, we're going to, we're going to get started here directly. So... Here are the pieces to my flask, and you see we have two long, two short. They'll get finger jointed together. You'll see that they'll be fairly decent sized flasks, and we'll come up with some matching hardware on the side um, later. So, what the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put all these together, and I'm going to mark the top. It's very, very important that um, we have a reference. So, I'm just going to put a, some marks across here so that these all face together. And then uh, 
we're going to start. So let's get this out of the way. Now it's important to decide what's going to be your front, what's going to be your back, or whatever you're going to start with. Okay. So this is my flask like this. I don't know how much of it you can see in the camera. Um, I'm going to start with these ends first and then come back and get these. So we'll do that. I'm going to set these aside because we're not going to need these right now. And start with this. Now, basically, the thing to remember, we mark these because this reference mark always relates to this uh, spacer dowel here that, we've, that, that we have in here. And we'll always face it towards that dowel, dowel or, or little spacer, uh, when we make our cuts. So uh, with that, we'll get started and, and we'll make some cuts. And then uh, I'll, I'll stop and then uh, I'll come back and, and, and video some more. So I have the mark facing this way. And then I'm going to take this here and straddle it right over the pen and we're going to go back and forth until we get all the way across. Okay, now we're going to turn it over and again we're going to keep the mark to the left. All right, I'm going to finish cutting these, and then we'll come back. Okay, now that I have both of these cut, remember that we kept the reference line over here. Uh, the next thing to do is to cut this, uh, the long parts here. Now, remember, these got to be, uh, these got to match these, which means that we have to have some sort of spacer here uh, to make sure that we cut right on the edge so that that fits in there. Well, the nice thing is that this here is the perfect spacer. So here's our mark. Now, this is where we're going to vary a little bit. We're going to put the mark and face it this way, put that over there, and then we'll take our first piece here and make sure that our mark is facing this way. We're always facing this way with the mark on the piece that we're cutting, and we're going to put that right there, and we're going to start our cut here, and then we'll move across and cut this one here. So let's get that one going. Let's move this out of the way a little bit. Okay, we got them all cut out, and I did hit them with the sander a little bit, and they're a little tight, so probably I really need to adjust this, and if you look at uh, uh, William's uh, video on that, he, he gives a, a, a very detailed way to adjust it, but you know, um, plywood is probably not the best thing to use as a, uh, um, a molding frame, if you had some hardwood or some hard pine or something like that, probably would be better. I do recommend going at least over... Uh, three quarters of an inch. Uh, you know, I mean, three quarters will work, but uh, I'm kind of partial to at least inch, inch and a quarter would probably be even better. But hey, look, I'm going to use them because it is what it is. All right, so I got all my marks lined up here, so let's put them together. And we'll see all the marks are here at the top, so we'll start over here. And hopefully these will go together. I did have to drive them a, a little bit, they're, they're stiff, they need a little more uh, play. So I'll get out my mallet here. Okay. Same thing over here. That one actually went together a little better. So could be my head slipped or something. I'm not sure. I don't know. Point is, uh, I think this will work fine for what it needs to work for. And keep in mind, it's only half of the flask. So there we go. And the nice thing is it's nice and flat across there. So wonder if the nice thing about this jig makes it very, very flat. And once I, uh, I'll pull this apart and I'll glue all these together, uh, clamp them down, and uh, um, sand these flush after it's dry, and then we'll do some hardware. And, and that should be, uh, give it a couple coats of uh, 
a clear coat or something just to protect the wood so it doesn't absorb the moisture uh, from the sand. And these should be two very, very, very serviceable products. So um, I'll, we'll come back after uh, I get them all cut and, and get the other half uh, and get these glued together. Okay, I got uh, both uh, flasks cut out, or both halves of the flask, the cope and the drag, uh, cut out and dry fitted together. I actually only have enough clamps to uh, glue and clamp up one at a time, so I'm not going to show that. I'm sure, I'm sure you guys can figure out how to glue this uh, stuff up. Uh, one thing I do did want to say that I told you I wanted two inches of sand um, around my pattern. And, you know, so I'm thinking, oh, well, my pattern's 8 by 12, so I want it uh, 12 by uh, uh, 14, right? Or, I'm sorry, 12 by 16. And you know what I've done? Uh, this is a rookie mistake, but uh, I think it's going to work anyway. I, uh, I, I wanted to measure from the inside, and uh, but I measured from the outside. So what I ended up with is a flask that gives me about an inch of space all the way around. Now the finished uh, plaque is only going to be... I don't know, three eighths, a quarter inch, probably a quarter inch. That's what I'm gonna try first. I'm gonna see if I can pour hot and uh, see what happens. Uh, but so, but I still got about an inch of sand around. They're still gonna be good quality flasks, I think. Uh, the next thing I need to do, uh, I'm gonna get these glued up, and then uh, I'm gonna fabricate some sort of uh, aligning pins for the side. Uh, I'm gonna try to do something a little nicer than I've done before. Normally, I just use little wooden wedges, and and that works okay. But I mean, look, I spent a lot of time making these flat uh, this flask. So uh, might as well do it a little bit better. So uh, when I get to that part, we'll come back to it um, and go from there. So uh, in the meantime, uh, thanks for watching. And uh, um, I'll probably uh, just put this video out as it is. And I will um, put another video out. Or maybe I'll hang on to this. Who knows? So uh, until I get it all done, and we'll go from there. Anyway, thanks for watching. And again, visit uh, uh, my website, www.myheap.com. Uh, for some casting and molding and CNC stuff. Uh, you can check out my KRM X01 build um, uh, where we're at so far with that and, and uh, just enjoy yourself. God bless you and have a great day.